complete the left-hand fraction in a pair of equivalent fractions using only multiplication. If you've done problems like this before, where the right-hand fraction needs completing, then you know we can only multiply or divide to make an equivalent fraction. If you get this kind of problem right, then you're ready for the next step. You know, when completing any equivalent fraction pair, we look at the finished part, the two numerators or the two denominators, to decide how to finish it off. With this pair of equivalent fractions, we have both numerators, and we know that 3 times 5 is 15. Whatever we do to the top, we've got to do to the bottom, so something times 5 is 40. Think through the 5 times table till you get to the answer of 40, and you'll see that 8 times 5 is 40, so 8 is our missing denominator. We worked from the smaller number to the larger number, we multiplied. Here, the larger number is on the left. This time, we're going smaller. We're reducing. We are dividing. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. We know this because we know that 5 times 2 is 10. For the unfinished part, some students get stuck wondering what number divided by 2 is 3. It can seem hard to do because we're starting from an unknown number position. But don't worry, there's an easy way to do this. Did you notice this 5 times 2 is 10 statement? That's the inverse of 10 divided by 2 is 5. We can use the inverse operation and work right to left. That's very helpful because it gives us a number to start from. So down here with these denominators, if I start with the 5 and end at the 10, I'm multiplying. Of course, 5 times 2 is 10. We know whatever we do to the bottom, we've got to do to the top. So 3 times 2 is 6. The missing numerator is 6. You can check it back like this. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 times 2 is 10. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 times 2 is 6. If you work through this kind of problem from larger number to smaller number, you are dividing. Here, that means we work from left to right. If you work from smaller number to larger number, you are multiplying. And here, that means we're working from right to left. This thinking is a key to any complete the equivalent fraction problem. You can start with a known number, do your operation, and find the missing number. Basically, you can whiz through any of these problems just using multiplication. That is a game changer for many students. Last one, then it's your turn. The first fraction is incomplete, again. We have 10 and 80 as our denominators. No problem. If I work right to left, I'm going smaller to larger. 10 times something is 80. 10 times 8 is 80. Now we do the same to the top. So working right to left again, 3 times 8 gives me 24 as that missing numerator. I want you to get that it doesn't matter which part of whichever fraction is incomplete because now you have the math tools and the thinking to deal with it. Next, I want you to practice this kind of problem until you're not bothered where the missing part of the equivalent fraction pair is. Once you can do that, you've got this. Next time, we'll be comparing and ordering fractions.